for the first time in my lifetime, we worked across issues and communities with ease. Doors opened. People said, sure, I'll co-sponsor. Yes, I'll collect signatures. Yes, I'll come. Yes, I'll publicize. Let me come in and make phone calls. And we, we all lay down our sim se separate issues, in a sense, and we became one movement. And we worked together to stop that war with Iraq. And then that movement was joined nationally. So we looked and we listened nationally, and people in other communities were doing the same thing. The environmentalists joined with the labor rights people. The labor rights people joined with the students, and on and on and on, until we were this extraordinary chain. Uh, and, you know, there were absolute differences in the organizing, but none of those differences were more important than the goal of stopping an aggressive response from our country. And I think that one of the things to, to move from a stopping war position, which is very much um, reactive, it's a preventing um, energy, and we're sort of trying to meet the government and figure out what they're going to do next and uh, move over there quickly and say no to that and then move over there and say no to that. I think that we have to actually um, change direction almost entirely and also strategy and be proactive, not reactive. Um, and I think that right now one of the things in terms of looking at this imperial imperialist um, presence in Iraq, looking at this sort of endless war on terror and the imperialist engine that's underneath that, um, one of the things we absolutely have to do is go to the corporate roots of it, to look at the corporate control of the government and look at what we're getting, getting what we're getting from uh, our constant war on terror. And I think that that necessitates that we uh, actually look at the seeds of empire within ourselves first. We need to connect the dots of the relationship between Halliburton getting the contract in Iraq and what does it mean for a woman, young person, or man here in the United States. We need to link the local struggles to the global realities. And we have to make those bridges because people all over the world understand those connections. The fifth ministerial meeting of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, as you know, is happening or ending now in Cancun. And people of the world came together to oppose U.S. global policy corporate-driven global policy, um, and really crippled those meetings. And that says to me that the people of the world, these were people's movements, you know, um, they understand the connection between their lives, their experience. The Korean farmer who committed suicide at the gates of the meeting, he understood the reality of what was happening inside, those global decisions on a corporate level, how they were having an effect. You know, and the women from India who came, the women from Mexico, they all understand these global policies and how they're brought home. We in the United States, we don't, we don't have that connection yet. So that's our job to make that connection.